Welcome to my channel. The slides that are rolling by are an indication of some of the things that I cover on a regular basis in my videos. Once you have watched the video, I would appreciate it if you would click the like button and leave a small comment. It's a really a big help to the channel. Uh, the YouTube logarithm, when it sees that, promotes the channel more and will be more viewers. I would appreciate that very much. Thank you for watching. Well, hello everybody. Putting a few clips together here for a, a video. This is my German green tomato. Uh, what you're looking at is the very top of it. It finally grew up six feet tall. And I've pruned the top off so it won't get any, any larger. I have been joking ever since I planted this thing. How do you tell when a green tomato is ripe? I assumed that German green tomato meant that they stay green. Well, that's not what's happening with mine. I'll get in there and get a close-up of the tomatoes for you. Well, as they ripen, they first turn sort of a yellow color, and then I would call it orange on that largest one, which I'm going to pick. I'm going to have that in a tomato sandwich for lunch, I hope. So, does anybody know? Are they supposed to do that? The seed packet said German green. Maybe this is a something else. If you've grown German green before, let me know. Thank you. In amongst the weeds at the back of one of these beds is a volunteer tomato. I'm going to pick those two right now, but I've had one off of it already. They're delicious, but I have no idea what the variety might be. Whatever it is, it came from seed in here and is already producing ripe tomatoes. I have a number of other volunteer tomatoes. I've just left them alone. Some of them are just starting to flower, so whether or not I get anything other than a green tomato off of them remains to be seen. Well, the last half of this video I'm going to make pickled cauliflower. At least I hope I'm going to make pickled cauliflower. And I need an onion, so I'm going to take one of my Rosa de Milano, Italian heirloom onions. And of course, I've chosen one that's a decent size and not huge. Um, some of them are quite a bit smaller than that. I've had one before and it was very good. So we'll be using that to make cauliflower, pickled cauliflower, a bit later on. My cucumber patch has been producing wonderfully. <laughs> I've made two batches of the sweet relish. Um, the second batch was a double batch, so I guess I've made three batches of that, and one large batch of, of pickled dill pickles so far. I want to make more dill pickles soon because I now have dill heads that are maturing in here. I had to use bought and seed, um, the spice, dill seed, uh, in making the, the one of the first batch that I made, but uh, I've already opened a jar and dried them and they, they've got lots of dill flavor. I picked almost 10 pounds of uh, gherkins out of this yesterday and looking around I still see a few more that I missed. Uh, I just picked this, what I call the English cucumber, it's a seedless, soft, de delicate skin uh, cucumber. If, you, if it was hanging vertically from a, an arbor or a trellis or whatever they would grow perfectly straight but laying on the ground they tend to be a bit on the crooked side. Anyway, they are delicious, and I've been using those in salads and sandwiches for quite some time. I'm having a mystery happen here, though. When I made my last batch of relish, some of my gherkins, supposedly seedless gherkins, had seeds in them. I don't have a variety of cucumber that has male blossoms. and They would have to get cross-pollinated with something in order to produce seeds. The only thing I can think of is I have that French heirloom uh, melon in here. If it was possible that a bee visited it and then went to the cucumbers and that worked for cross-pollination. Other than that, just outside the door here, there are the squash, the winter squash. But I don't know if cucumbers and squash or cucumbers and melon can cross-pollinate or not. But somehow, a few of them develop seeds, as they shouldn't have done. Before we go out to the garden to get my cauliflower I'll show you what I've got for a harvest so far. That's the onion. These are the two volunteer tomatoes. And that is my German green. 
and the rest of the bowl is full of the sweet rambler tomatoes. I don't get that many every day, but every two or three days I would get that many. And there are still thousands to ripen. I'll try to show you one or two of the plants here. Hopefully you can see what I'm looking at there. Green ones hanging everywhere. And sometimes you have to go down in amongst the the foliage to get the ripe ones. They're ripening in behind where you can't see them, but they are a prolific tomato. I'm out in my brassica patch. The broccoli is coming along quite nicely. I haven't had any yet, but I'm going to harvest this one for dinner this evening. Not huge, but if I don't start using them now, I've only got six plants, I'll have six heads that'll be huge and all starting to flower at the same time, so I like them when they're nice and tight and small anyway, so that will be lunch this evening. The cabbage are heading up nicely. Some of the earlier odor leaves have been shot full of holes, and I'm still not sure if that's cabbage loper or slugs and snails. I'm going to give another spraying of the cabbage loper stuff, my BTK later today. Uh, there would be holes still if you use BTK um, to get rid of the lopers because they have to eat some of it before it kills them. Um, it doesn't kill on contact so there would be a hole where the, the loper ate some of the leaf and then died. But anyway the better part of this is the heads of cabbage themselves are really still quite clean. I have a third head of cauliflower at the house in the refrigerator that I cut a few days ago. They're not huge heads. I am going to take them and, and do pickled cauliflower with them anyway. Along with the third one that I have, I should get maybe three jars or so of pickled cauliflower. But I want to show you a close-up of the one, well, one out of six. This is all I've now harvested five. And one out of six, how strange its growth was. If you leave a cauliflower in the garden too long, the same as broccoli, it will bolt and try to turn to flowers. All six of these were grown from seed, planted the same day, transplanted into the garden the same day. And this is the only one that did this, and it did it almost immediately. Something wrong with that puppy, but I won't be eating it, so I just cleaned out the other ones out of the bed. I'll cut that off and maybe the hens would enjoy it. The scarlet runners have been doing very well. I've had two pickings off of them and as you can see those few there are starting to get some size to them. But I let them get quite long. I just make sure I pick them before they start developing the big bean in them. I'm going to leave some uh, to develop the bean so I'll have seed for next year. They're an open pollinated heirloom variety. and. I can show you lots more flowers. So there's hope of more to come yet, I guess. Well, let's go make some pickled cauliflower. I'll bet you've never seen anybody make a tomato sandwich before. <laughs> I'm showing off my bread. I made pan de mie yesterday. For two reasons. It makes the world's best toast and probably the world's best sandwich bread. I just love the flavor of it. It's so different. Um, of course, it has a lot of added additions in it. It has lots of butter and milk and whatever in the making of it, but... And baked in a pulling pan, maybe that does something to the flavor. I don't really know. But I love the flavor of it, that's all I can say, I guess. in my butter. And to me, a tomato sandwich has to have mayonnaise. Let's see what this thing is like. Oh, 
lovely color the whole way through. As I got into the front of the stem, it was kind of weird, so I'll eliminate that part. Looks very good. I like the color. It's not green, but I like the color. Mm. And that is a delicious tomato. I might save some of the seed out of one of those to try it again next year. There is my tomato sandwich made with pandemi bread. If you're interested in that, I have a video of it already of making pandemi. I can give you the link or maybe I'll put the link below this video. Almost ready to get started. I'll show you the list of ingredients. And of course there will be a link down below to this recipe that I'm using. That's my cauliflower, cut up into flowerettes, two teaspoons of pickling salt, two and a quarter cups of white vinegar, one cup of sugar, one cup of onion, thinly sliced, half cup of red bell pepper, I might have gone a little strong there, but it would be more colorful, I guess, uh, one tablespoon of mustard seeds, a teaspoon and a half of celery seeds, a half teaspoon of ground turmeric, and a half teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and I went with a full teaspoon. I like to think there'll be a little bit of heat in it when they're finished. I'm going to make the pickling liquid first. That was the vinegar and the sugar. seeds, celery seeds, turmeric, <laughs> I sounded the gong, and the red pepper flakes. Now this gets brought to a boil and then reduced to a simmer for five minutes. Okay, I reread the instructions. <laughs> I've tried to figure out when the onion and bell pepper go into anything, and they go in at this stage. I'll give that a good stir and get it on the stove. That's six cups of boiling water and the two teaspoons of pickling salt. And the cauliflower gets blanched in that for three minutes. So started my timer. I don't want soft cauliflower. Now, at the end of three minutes, that gets added to the seasoning mix. Well, I blanch for three minutes and then I drain the cauliflower. I mix it in with the I'm calling the seasoning mixture, I guess, the vinegar and the other vegetables and spices and whatever. And we're ready to start filling jars. You put the solid parts in the bottles first, and the juice gets added last. We'll find out in a few minutes here how many jars I get. Probably only two, hopefully three. Get whatever I get, I guess it doesn't make much difference. It smells good. Cauliflower smelled good when it was blanching, too. Anyway, I will show you what I get when I finish here. 
I don't need to watch me fill whatever jars there are. Well, I guess I might have, I must have had the right size cauliflower. It called for one large head and I had three small ones. Anyway, it made three jars and that's what it's supposed to make. So. That's good. I put the, what do you want to call this, seasoning liquid, I guess, in a jug to make it easier to pour. And divide it equally among the three jars. That one there is getting more of the seeds and stuff. But. Now, to get lids on them and get them in the canner. Hopefully the lens isn't going to steam up, but that's my canner. Got a full rolling boil. And these go in for 10 minutes. If it goes off the boil, you wait until it starts boiling again before you time your 10 minutes. bring you back when they come out of the canner. Well they're out of the hot water bath and I think they've all sealed but I had company. Someone stopped by for a visit for a few minutes and I heard some of them snap and click but I'm not sure if all three did or not. If there's one that didn't I will refrigerate that one. Now to wait. You have to wait three weeks before they are fully marinated and, and ready to eat. But it's quite an easy recipe and uh, it will have one large head of cauliflower from the store and a, a, red, a red green pepper, a red uh, bell pepper, onion and uh, you can go to town and make your own if it's something that interests you. Well thank you very much for watching.